When I first started out, I had these grand ideas of reinterpreting Mexican food, and you know, I was trying too hard, you know, to do something that I wasn't me. And then now, as a chef gets older, you start to appeal to your grandma's cooking more so than ever. You can't have an identity without having food be part of it. They're synonymous, they're connected. I believe that the way I think about food is very different. It's singular. It's holding on to memories, holding on to times of my life. So there's something inherently fleeting about food, and I don't want that legacy, I don't want those dishes to disappear. It's just a way for me to connect with my family. It's a way of paying respect. We are not a Louisiana Mexican restaurant. We're a Mexican restaurant disseminating ingredients that are local and then putting that through a Mexican lens and idiom and then making this food that is entrenched in tradition but reinterpreted with modern technique. The food in itself becomes something not just, you know, comida casera, home style food. It becomes something that's beautiful and elevated. So this right here, is no big deal, it's just a book of my life. <laughs> and that's my memo. My grandmother's cooking style was just straight up delicious. I have a tattoo of her right here. And here it says, Escuela Vieja, old school. My memo's meatballs. And people have all kinds of recipes that go back to family traditions and all that. But this one really speaks to me. She took the idea of cooking at home and made it a possibility to do it professionally. And I never thought that was something that was viable or even possible. When my meba cooked, the food was so developed and so profound. And every meal was not just a meal, it was theater. For me, growing up with a very spirited, strong woman was just the way I, I, I knew life to be. And there you have it. Grandma's albondigas, meatballs. A city is not defined by its architecture. It's not defined by its history, per se. It's defined by the people. People are what make a city what it is. St. Rock it is. When I started cooking here in 1990, it was just Creole food in New Orleans. And now the playbook has grown exponentially. Now you have all these young owners of their businesses being able to just go after your dreams. This is a beautiful example of New Orleans taking care of all the different Epicurean treasures that we have here. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with the city, I fell in love with the connection to culture and family. All those things spoke to me, and this is where I want to be from now on. For me, Nothing says New Orleans like fresh shellfish and seafood. We got it going on like nobody else has. What's going on, babe? Hey, how's it going? You got something for me? Yes, sir. Come let's, over here, Sean. Let's do it. Look at this. I get to go in the back. So this, this is where you do it. So this is where it happens. I came in this morning. Dude, and when you have a soft shell crab, it's luscious. You can taste uh, its environment within all these beautiful pockets. Yes, and every part is as much delicious as it is Louisiana. That's correct. I love it. We're going to take the whole tray if you don't mind. I'll pack them up for you, Thank chef. Thank you, brother. Let's highlight some of the classic dishes of Mexico and, and kind of reinterpret them with, with great Louisiana product and have the menu be free-flowing and constantly evolving. It's something that's organic where, it, where it's alive. Beautiful soft-shell crabs done Johnny Sanchez style celebrating New Orleans ingredients. photo of my dad and my mom. And here you have a photo of my mom cooking at the summit with Ronald Reagan in 1983. My mom's restaurant was, was called Sarela, her namesake restaurant. It opened in 1987. It kind of defined my mom as, you know, this unbelievable pioneer of Mexican cuisine in New York. And then I grew up in that environment. This is her first book, 
um, food from my heart. So not only am I a third generation cookbook author and restaurateur, but I'm also a second generation cook at the White House. We use this as a reference a lot at the restaurant. I always try to reference the cookbooks as far as just making sure that we're staying on the authentic path. You know, this is where we are as chefs. This is what, what speaks to us. Look at Mama's book, look at Mama's book, and make sure that, you know, what you're doing and how the menu is evolving has a little bit of a connection to these books. You know, one of the things that I learned from her, my mom was the idea of making sure that we're throwing a party every night. You know, being present at your restaurant. I take all those lessons every day to work. And just making sure, you know, that not to take ourselves too seriously and make sure that margaritas are flowing, people are smiling, music is up. Let's have fun, man. This is what it's all about. We want to go that extra mile to anticipate our customers' needs. And that, in turn, makes us happy. And it gives you joy to serve others. And that's what we do here. And that's what you do at home. We need to season this. All right, what do you, you need salt? Yes, please. When the chef cooks at home, there's like eight different dishes made. So it's like a big experience. It's like a, a little journey into different flavors. And that's how I like to cook. Cooking at home is so important for me because it, it allows me to cook in a way that I might not necessarily do at, at work. What resonates more with us now is not trying to prove ourselves as far as a large stage and you know uh, having recognition with publications and acceptance and praise from your peers necessarily. It's more about all right, how am I doing justice to my family and allowing those great home cooks that were so influential in, in, in my upbringing. How are we taking care of those, those people? And how are we making sure that their legacy is not forgotten? And as chefs, we can do it by cooking their food. Oh my God. Oh, no, okay? oh. Food and the way we commune was very important. There's a lot of parallels between treating people in the kitchen or in the restaurant to the way I was brought up. I just want to thank all of you guys for being here. We have new friends, old friends, we have family, we have the love of my life. So, I'd like to propose a toast to all of us. This is something natural, it comes to me very easily. It's a ceremony that takes all day, it concludes with this unbelievable meal and making people happy. And I can't imagine myself doing anything else, you know? Yeah, so this is it right now. This book is pretty, pretty important. It's something tangible that I will, I'll be able to give to, to our son and say, this is where you come from, young man.